This is Caroline from Wisdom Tree Kids, and I have a special guest today. Uh, I have Olivia. She's my daughter, and we're going to take a little bit of time to talk about homeschooling. And I know a lot of you are homeschooling or schooling at home for the very first time. So we want to talk about our journey together. <laughs> so Olivia, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. She doesn't know. Okay. Um, well, my name is Louie Van, of course, and I'm 15 years old, and I'm in the ninth grade. I've started two businesses in the past two years, and I, that's about it. And how long have you been homeschooling? Uh, nine years. Nine years? Yeah. Nine years. Okay. Actually, no, not nine years. She's in the ninth grade, but we've been homeschooling. Eleven years. Or oh, yeah. Yeah. Longer than that. Ten officially, but we... Um, always did some type of schooling at home, even when she was three. As, as soon as she could hold a writing apparatus in her hand, that's when we started. And we lived in a house that had an attic, and we kind of used that room to um, put some school stuff in and, you know, just kind of test out the waters. Our journey did not start out with the intention of homeschooling. I didn't know anything about homeschooling. In fact, um, I thought homeschoolers were weird. <laughs> and um, I had no idea how to approach it. And so by the time she was old enough to go to kindergarten, we checked out the local schools and we decided to go to a board meeting. And I have worked for the public schools, so I you can learn a lot at a board meeting. So um, the three of us went, her dad and I, and um, Olivia, we went to a board meeting, our very first one in our community. And we were really disappointed to hear that they, all they could talk about is that they didn't have enough money for all the programs that they wished to put together. So all the fun stuff out of school at that particular time was being cut out because they didn't have enough money. And so um, all we heard was two words, we can't. We can't do this, we can't do that. And so we left the meeting rather disheartened. Like why would we send her to a place where all they could talk about was we can't, we don't have enough money. And it was a very depressing meeting. So we came home and I thought, okay, maybe we should send her to a private school. And there was a private Catholic school right across the way, actually. And um, then we thought, oh, I don't know. Um, it was all day kindergarten and it just wasn't fitting what we wanted to do. And then we looked at a constellation school and went back and forth with them for a little bit. And then she was accepted. And I thought, oh, great. Okay, so now we found a home for her, school home. <laughs> I remember <laughs> none of this. <laughs> I know, you were too young. And um, I had a good friend that lived in the city over, and she said, and she had a daughter exactly the same age as Olivia, and she said, so um, did you check out your school? And I said, yeah, we're, we're not going to go that route. Um, we've been accepted at the Constellation School, so that's what we're going to do. And she said, well, we're homeschooling. And I'm like, what? Homeschooling? <laughs> That's great for you. And she goes, no, I was actually telling you this to see if maybe um, we can team up and go through the first year of the journey of homeschooling together. And between us, maybe we could find a good curriculum. We can have the girls um, get together and maybe we could even have some fun weekly things that we can do with the girls educationally or go to museums and things like that. And wow, that, that weighed really heavy on me. And then she invited me to a, um, a homeschool co-op meeting where parents get together and um, they find out uh, how they can pull their resources and teach some classes, you know, a couple of times a month or whatever. 
And so I went to that meeting and I thought, well, this is the way to go because I don't know what I'm doing and what a great, uh, you know, connection to have with all these other parents who've been doing it for years. Well, come to find out they were really strict about their rules and you had to fill out a form. And if your uh, background does not um, coincide with what they think is a good family to join their club, then you won't get accepted. And so we were rejected. So that was the first time where you know, I've, we've applied to something and it's outside of the conventional educational system and we were rejected. And so I thought maybe this homeschooling thing is too weird. I don't, I'm not sure if we're going to go this route. <laughs> My goodness, it's not like we're trying to be, you know, FBI agents or anything like all our backgrounds are checked and everything, your belief system. Oh my gosh, this is just too weird. Um, and then, and then, you know, a few weeks passed by, and I decided, no, I think we can do kindergarten because I didn't want a full day kindergarten for Olivia because that is just too many hours away from home, and I just saw no benefit from that at all. And so we just decided to jump in, full feet, both feet and um, just try it out. So we bought a curriculum and we went to a convention actually to look at all the different curriculums. And some of these conventions have rooms, I kid you not, like the size of a football field big. filled with <laughs> curriculum. And if you don't think that's overwhelming, I'm telling you for a newbie, I mean, at the end of you know the conference, uh, it was a couple day conference. I was worn out. I just could not talk about homeschooling. I didn't want to think about homeschooling. I didn't want to look at any curriculum. <laughs> I was like, these people are nuts, you know? But um, we ended up choosing a curriculum that was kind of an all in one curriculum in a box. Had math, English, you know, all the subjects. And for kindergarten, you know, there isn't a whole lot <laughs> that you can do in those subjects. But we found out the good part is, is that you have a tremendous amount of freedom. So we did school in the park until the weather turned too cold and then we moved our schoolroom indoors. But we ended up going to libraries and to parks and we have wonderful parks here. So, and during the day, no one's there and you can always find a park bench and a table to do your work in. And so we were able to learn on the spot. So yeah, there was some yeah. book work. Definitely, but I mean. But then we were free to, to do what? What did we do? Oh, we went to museums. We went um, just tons of different places. And one of the places that I, I love is we were just driving. I don't know where we were driving to, but. Yeah, we, was, I think I know where you're. Yeah, we were talking about. We had a lot of adventures. Yeah. Sometimes we just get in the car and we would just and drive go. somewhere. And we found this little bakery, and we got to be friends with the man who owned it. And he just gave us some pieces of bread and showed us where his sheep farm was. And then we got to go feed the sheep with the old day old bread. And that was just so magical too. And you can't do that unless you're homeschooling or something like that. And True. It was just it was just. Amazing, and it was magical, and I got to learn that sheep ate bread, which I didn't think I would. <laughs> I have to agree with you, Olivia. That was a magical day because we didn't know what was going to happen, and that's the beauty of it is that we're out and about exploring, and there are so many nooks and crannies, um, interesting nooks and crannies in the area that we live in, and so when we happen to come across this bakery um, in the middle, seemingly in, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. It was a very, very small town. If you blinked your eyes, you would probably drive right through it. But the beauty of it is, is that he had a rich, thick Italian accent. Yeah. He was off as the he most was... authentic person. Definitely. 
that we ever met. He had the best personality, and he did. And, and you know, let me, uh, well, he even oh. let me bake a little too. Remember he that? He did. I forgot about that. Yeah. He invited us into his kitchen. Um, baking kitchen. And he showed her how to um, knead dough and make this one special um, oh, so good too. bread that had um, like pepperoni it was on like, the inside. Or, it was like a calzone, but like, like it was rolled. Yeah, I mean, when does that happen, right? So that could never happen on a school field trip. We had one-on-one -on -one, um, instruction, or she did, and he put an apron on her. He just grabbed some flour, and he was just he was just making bread. And she was she was right there yeah. learning how to do it. And um, we kind of felt like we made a friend. It was it was deep. And then when he said, "Here, take this day old bread and go to my house, <laughs> go to my house and feed my sheep," and we're like. Okay. Okay. Sure. <laughs> no problem. So he gave us this pretty good sized right. bag. Oh, and it smelled so good. And we were tempted to eat it actually because it was only a day old. I mean, it's so I, and it good. smelled so good. I thought, wow, what a waste to give it to the sheep, right? But we did. <laughs> so we and, and he told us exactly where his house was, which was you know no more than a couple of miles away from his bakery. And then, you know, he described his house. He didn't even give us an address. He just described his house. <laughs> and we could hear the sheep. And so he said, you know, the, the fence or the gate has a little trick to it. This is what you have to do. And here we are in this man's house in his, on his property that we just met not too long ago. And we're in his backyard feeding his sheep. <laughs> I mean, you can't get much home to do it. But you know, we have lots and lots of stories like that where um, our uh, you know daily adventures took us somewhere else to be educated. Education does not have to happen in a building. In a building. It definitely does not. You can learn anything. You can just walk outside and look at the bugs and learn about different things of how they behave. Because I used to do that too. I just go outside and uncover bugs and stuff. And I just, I love to do that when I was younger. And I learned a lot from that actually. Yeah, and um, we live, you know, a couple of blocks away from a beautiful lake. And we have uh, on many, many occasions have taken school work out you know, on the lake, on the beach. And um, sometimes, you know, when she's done with her assignments or whatever, um, then we can play on the beach and look for shells, because we do have shells at the beach, and um, sea glass. Mm -hmm. And one year there was a swarm of ladybugs that came. I'll never forget this. And um, she played with the ladybugs for hours. but. It was one of those very uh, unique moments where time just stopped and she was able to enjoy, you know, being outdoors with the ladybugs. How many years ago? Was I, that was many, many years ago. <laughs> I remember more about our homeschooling journey than she does, of course. Because <laughs> sometimes I'll remind her about stuff and she'll say, I, I don't I remember that. <laughs> and I go, oh yeah, that's right, you're only seven. But that was how our journey started. And I have to tell you that although we've had some wonderful experiences, it's not always perfect. Homeschooling is a an adventure. It's, ex it's an experiment. Absolutely. It's an experiment. And me coming from uh, my background, you know, I never even heard of homeschooling. I, you know, I had jobs in corporate and also in the education center sector. I worked for a college. I um, worked for two different K-12 school districts in the administrative offices. So, you know, my whole thing was you need to send your kids to school. You know, that's a good place for them to get socialization and they learn stuff and it's fun. And, and then on the flip side, I can go to work, right? 
But um, since she was born, I decided that I was going to stay home with her and raise her myself instead of running back and forth to work and trying to make all that crazy schedule happen. So, and plus I was a lot older when I had her. So it wasn't like the first time around where I had more energy and um, <laughs> I just decided, uh, you know, in my forties having uh, our last child was not going to work real well with us, you know, commuting. And we lived in Northern California at the time and commuting to work was an hour each way. So I can't imagine having a newborn in my forties and traveling back and forth to work, you know, a couple hours every day and then trying to be a, a good mom at night or, you know, hopefully having enough energy to be a, a mom. And then having her some, you know, with someone else uh, for the majority of the day just was my idea of handling a gift. And I consider her a total gift <laughs> if we were not Thanks, expecting mom. her. <laughs> but it's true, you know, when you have children, they are gifts. And I understand that not homeschooling is not for everyone. And it's a personal decision and it's a journey. And yeah, are you going to mess up? Of course. Uh, can you fix it? Yeah. Are you going to mess your child up for the rest of their lives? I highly doubt it. Yeah, right? That, that, would, that wouldn't happen. Are you worried about socialization? That's a valid concern. So, um, for us, we found that we had more activities outside of the house with other homeschoolers than we can choose from. I mean, if, if we just went that route, we would be gone from the home at least four to five days out of the week <laughs> doing these educational field trips and meetups and everything like that. And we met with so many different people. And I got to talk to both younger kids, older kids, and adults. And it's just, it's a really great experience to be able to have a, age, a huge age range of people to talk to because it's going to help uh, your kids in the future a lot more than just like being stuck in one classroom, just talking and socializing with the same people every day. Yeah, I, I agree. And um, I thought Olivia to be very brave when she was younger because she could talk and strike up a conversation with anybody. And um, I'm more introverted, so when she goes out and initiates a conversation with someone, of course, I'm going to have to be there and join in <laughs> the conversation because I want to know who she's talking to, right? But um, I just thought she was really brave. Now, I couldn't do that when I was younger. If someone were to talk to me, I'm like, you are not talking. <laughs> I don't have to answer, do I? Mom! <laughs> But Olivia, from a very young age, and she's just able to stand on her own two feet and, you know, felt confident enough to have a conversation with anyone, no matter how old they were. And she was kind to the younger kids, and then she could strike a conversation with adults as well. So I think I had it easy because she's just easy, you know, in that way. So, you know, what happens if you make the wrong curriculum choice? Right? Have we ever done that? Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, we have. <laughs> so how do we fix it? Um, we just we just change curriculums. It's not too hard to do that. You can just do a little research, go mm -hmm. out, maybe you can try several different curriculums during one school year. It's it's pretty easy. True. Yeah. yeah. And don't worry about the money. Yeah, you're gonna put out some money for curriculum. But don't let the money or the amount of money um, force you to continue with a curriculum that you don't like or is not working for your child. Because that is you're not going to enjoy it, and it's not going to be a good experience for either of you. So it's better to get something that you both enjoy and you both like, even if it does cost a little bit of money. But if your child is learning, then it's, it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. Absolutely. So... Um, so I kind of call that um, educational money because you've learned that you don't like it or you've learned that you do. 
And so what's great about homeschooling is that you have the flexibility to tailor and customize um, a learning year with their input. Mm -hmm. And I never let her out of it, out of the decision making process. Yeah, I would do the initial research and then um, hopefully that year we can get to a homeschooling convention and that way we can pick it up with our hands, thumb through the pages and, um, you know, see if it sparks an interest in her because if there's no interest, why are we even doing this in the first place, right? Education should spark the senses. Something should happen. It's not a filling of a vessel. So the top of our head does not open up and I can just pour the information in. And then I expect her to tell me what I just taught her. <laughs> that does not work. They have to be engaged. They have to want to learn because the only person who can actually determine whether they're learning or not is her. I mean, I can present all kinds of information, but if she doesn't take it in, is that education or does it apply to her? Is that really education? So I am not saying anything despairing about our school system. I just want to make that clear because I view it as one out of many ways for children to get an education. So if you love sending your child to school and your child is enjoying it and, act and learning and having the kind of experience that they want, great, that's wonderful. If you're on the fence and saying, you know what, we've been home now for three, four weeks. I don't know how long it's been now. And maybe it's going on the fourth week. And we're starting to get the hang of things. And I'm learning something about my child that I never learned before. And we're finding that we're enjoying each other's company while um, learning together. Mm -hmm. And it is a learning together because I never, I, I will tell you right now, I never learned as much history as we did when we're at home. I didn't learn all these things in school. I don't re even recall some of the stuff um, that, you know, Olivia was learning about history, especially the history of our country. I, I didn't, I don't know where I was. I was physically in school, but I couldn't tell you what specific things I learned. I, I just don't. I remember the social aspect. I remember um, having being friends with other kids and having lunch and having field trips. But, you know, you could beat me with a stick and I could not tell you <laughs> what I learned. And actually, I didn't really enjoy school. And you might find yourself in that position, too, that you might not enjoy school. But we wanted to come to you today to kind of give you an idea. And I'm not telling you, like, you need to do this to start homeschooling, this, 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 and this. No, this is not one of those lists. But um, I think people need to be aware that there are more options to education and educating your child than just sending them to school. And I'm, even growing up, my mom, I was raised by a single mom and our days was very simple. You get up, you eat breakfast, she goes to work, I go to school. We don't see each other until five or six at night because I was in daycare. So I was away from her for a good, you know, 10 hours at least um, during the day. I didn't know her. She did not know me. She came home tired from work, picked me up. Um, and then we had a few hours, you know, in the evening of dinner, I did a little homework, go to bed and we get up the next morning to do it all over again. And then we have Saturday and Sunday, which are filled with other activities. And so I even asked back then, I remember being little and I asked my mom, why do you have to go away every day? Why do I have to go every, away every day? 
what is this? It didn't sit right with me then. I remember um, being frustrated when I asked her questions that she couldn't answer. <laughs> it's just the way it is, okay? And Or if I asked a, uh, a question that she really didn't know how to answer, she just said, you know what? It's, it's not for you to know. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> so learning from her was like, no, actually, I did learn something from her. Uh, I learned that um, children are a gift and you should at least pay attention to them every once in a while. <laughs> Feed them, water them, watch them grow, and enjoy each other's company. And, and that just wasn't a uh, part of her um, skill set, actually, because she was so worried about putting a roof over our heads and working and, and that kind of thing, you know, uh, handling me was kind of like a side, a side <laughs> job. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, and I think because of that, I, um, well, it's made me who I am. And that's why I'm so passionate now about education and educating yourself. Self-education is, is just as important. It's very important. To have a spark for learning and to be able to see something and go, wow, I really want to learn about that. And then do research on your own. That's a wonderful gift to have. And to grow and to cultivate that is going to help many kids in later years in whatever they're doing. True. And um, I see so many kids um, that are completely tired. Um and worn out from the rigors of, you know, activities relating to school or school and um, maybe some uh, instances of escaping into their phones or, you know, am I boring you? No, no. <laughs> it's my kid. <laughs> no, you're not boring me. Do you know we're on Facebook Live, right? Yes, I know. <laughs> and here I am talking about kids who are really tired. <laughs> I am very tired. It's been a long week. <laughs> and she's homeschooled. I don't get it. <laughs> no, it's not only she was home, she's homeschooled, but she's had this week uh, to just catch up. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need some other homeschool kids to talk to. <laughs> One thing, um, you will, if you decide to take this journey, is that it, it's hard. I'm not going to lie to you. It, <laughs> it, it, is, it can be very hard and strenuous at times in a lot of different aspects. But Yeah. I mean, um, I'm not here to tell you that it's all, you know, hearts and roses oh, all the time. No, definitely. no. But um, nothing in life is really true. Nothing in life that's, I think, worth it um, is going to come easy. It's just, just the way it is. But if you're willing to explore it and work at it and, you know, make the commitment to your child that, um, oh, and then one thing I, I learned early on is I think around third grade, I had a meltdown. Everything. <laughs> Her third grade, not my third grade. <laughs> Where I, we've been doing it for a few years now. And everything was just going really good and everything. And we got a new curriculum. So this is, you know, I speak from experience. So we got a new curriculum. And it was touted to be one of the best rated homeschool curriculums. So and it got five stars everywhere. It was Kathy Duffy um, reviews and everything. And I go, okay, this is the way to go, man. And it costs like, I don't know, three, four hundred dollars for the whole thing because you got all the textbooks for all the subjects. You got even little manipulatives, you got math thing is she doesn't remember anything and I thought that would save me so much time to have to run around and find all these you know different 
elements of the curriculum on my own. So here it is, it comes in a box, right? This is glorious. So <laughs> I'm glad you don't. So this that particular year, we cleaned out a room, a spare room, and we're and I said, you know what? We're we're gonna have a school room. What was I thinking? We had never had a school room prior to this, and it was working. We were out and about doing school, but because of this box curriculum came, <laughs> I thought, great, we're going to have the school room. It's going to be so cool. We're going to have posters all over the room. We're going to have a little desk here. Da, 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 da. And um, September rolls around. We pull out this, all the smell of new books. When you crack them um, over, they go crack. The pure joy. Crack. It's wonderful. Crack. And then you have this, you know, new book smell. It's almost as good as new car smell. Yes. It's not better. <laughs> it's better. So we were all excited and we're like, oh, I just can't wait to dig into this. It was awful. I hate it. I remember I hated it. That's about it. And I was... And this is one of the times like, wow, we spent a ton of money on this curriculum. I have just rearranged this room, decorated it, and made it <laughs> so uh, the environment for learning is perfect. It was in my head. How wonderful the lighting. I mean, I just tried to. It to, is a fun room, too. I like it. Yeah, had lots of light, and we can open up the windows for fresh air, and it was just, you know, it was like the perfect scenario. And then things started falling apart. The room started getting too small. I felt claustrophobic, and then the curriculum suggested I should I should throw it out right away that you should time the. Uh, so when she's doing math, it should take X amount of minutes. And I, I took that literally. I mean, I took, I was like, okay. And I was starting to watch the time. And, and then I started putting a timer on my phone. And so, well, the curriculum said that she should be done with this in 35 minutes. 35 minutes went by and here she was still working it. And then, you know, she's oblivious to me timing it and getting all worked up and stressed out that she was not finished, you know, at the suggested time. I do not finish at the suggested time. I take my own time on everything. She, I, I forgot. She's been always been on her own time. I never stressed, you know, you need to do this in this period of time because we were so free flowing before and so now we got this box curriculum with all these suggestions and I was following it what was I thinking so you know it's a journey so I thought I you know I can't do this anymore this is too stressful and I remember telling my husband and my older daughter um, these things and this is terrible this is my you know my learning curve she won't do it she doesn't even want to do the math now. She doesn't like to do the, and everything was like, she, 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 she. Well, I just needed to go, you know, in a room with a mirror and look at, look at the reflection for a moment and stop, you know, looking at she and the curriculum. It was me and the curriculum. It had nothing to do with her. So I thought, what to do? Have I, have I messed up here? And then I had the idea that perhaps she needs to be tested to make sure that she's where she should be for a third grader. So I contacted my local school. We set up testing, and it was an eight-day testing period. That was torture. You remember that. Oh, yeah. That was. So poor thing, because of my own self-doubt, I had put her through eight days of testing at the local school district. And when we got there, the principal was like rolling out the red carpet. <laughs> oh, you're a homeschooler, but look at our fabulous school. And true, you could eat off the floors. I mean, they were shiny, buffed, clean. Everything looked 
perfect. And they had this um, beautiful library and resource room with all the latest, you know, computer equipment and all of these wonderful things. And he was sure to um, give us a tour and, and tell us about his wonderful, marvelous school. I appreciate that. Then he said, well, while she's in testing, you can go home. And I think the for that suggestion and I rejected it and I said no if you find me a chair anywhere in school where I'm out of the way but near her then that's what I want to do and he was like oh you don't want to run around and do some shopping or I'm like no I, I'm a homeschooling mom I, I don't want to escape my child the whole purpose of doing it so that we can foster a relationship and enjoy one another. I, I'm not dropping her off so that I can run around and do my own errands and stuff, you know, so that was kind of a foreign idea. <laughs> so I don't think I knew you stayed. I did. I was there. And um, so every day was just a few hours and I just waited for her and brought her home every day and brought her back. And we were always escorted to the classroom. Do you remember oh, that? Oh, yeah. He, he personally did it. Always took us to the classroom every day. Every day. And then, then you know, um, I I felt like it was a sales pitch every time we went down the hallway. <laughs> it, was. <laughs> it was. Because he would say, oh, we're having a book fair. Do you like books, Olivia? Oh, we have so many books. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay. Um, but one day out of the eight days, he could not escort us and there was no one else available to take us, but we kind of knew the route by then. Yeah. And so the office um, lady said, oh, just take yourself down there, it's okay. And so we did, we went and I took her to the room and on my way back, um, I saw the principal and see, I was still unsure whether I was making the right choice of homeschooling her. So every time we went to school, I'm like, well, maybe I should send her here. Maybe, you know. Actually, yeah. I was thinking that too, a little bit. I know, because she was starting to like the kids yeah. that was that were in the class. I didn't like the schoolwork there, but I liked the kids. Because <laughs> <laughs> the kids had a lot of questions for her, and it was kind of nice. And yeah. she's very social, so, you know, it's kind of worked out. It did. They had a lot of questions. They're like... So what's it like being homeschooled? Is it really weird? And I'm like, no, it's just, no, it's not weird. <laughs> no, we don't wear overalls all no. day long. <laughs> and I do not do school in my pajamas. That's like the number one question I have. Everyone's like, oh, you can do school in your pajamas. No, I, I, I change. <laughs> <laughs> she actually does get dressed. <laughs> so I, I was walking down the hall. Um, going to take my seat and I saw something I should not have seen and I'm not going to say what it is but there was my answer loud and clear that um, we are making the right choice definitely and the very very last day I had heard something about Common Core and um, so the last day I went and picked her up in the class and I asked the teacher that was over the class, can you tell me a little bit about Common Core? And she pulled me aside and said, and leaned in and said, continue what you're doing. It's gonna be better. And I thought, thank you for that. So I had two, not one, but two confirmations that we were on the right track. I'm not saying that every family is going to experience this kind of things. This, I'm just, we're just telling you our journey mm -hmm. through this. And um, so we never looked back. And I think we tossed out that box curriculum and maybe just took bits and pieces out of it throughout all clocks and um, took long breaks in between subjects and went back outside. And we realized that our style, her style of learning is to have as much freedom as possible, right? Because when you're homeschooling, no one's looking over your shoulder and telling you how to do it. So it largely depends upon you and your child. It's self-directed. 
And a lot of people can't take that kind of freedom. It's true. And um, it takes a long to unhook yourself from thinking that if you don't do it a certain way that your child will um, fall behind. And to tell you the truth, I, I was kind of worried in third grade that I had messed up somewhere along the line, but it turned out her test scores came back high and I was thrilled. And so we never looked back and we just kept going. And here she is in ninth grade and we're contemplating out doing dual enrollment at our local college because she can start taking college classes now and finish high school and, um, you know, earn credits towards her degree if she decides to go in that direction. So, so I'm just going to, she doesn't know what I'm going to ask her. I don't even know what I'm going to ask her, but what do you want to do? And, you know, for the rest of your life. I mean, do you have any idea? I mean, I, I you've had a, a very ideas. unique um, education. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, there are so many different possibilities out there, and I can choose any one of them. I found that I am really interested in psychology and human behavior and how we think and why we act the way we do. And so I really want to get into some psychology courses. And I also love creating and I love art. And I really want, I wouldn't pursue that as a degree, but it's one of my many passions. And I love animals as well. So maybe becoming a veterinarian or <laughs> just owning a piece of property with some animals would be the way I would want to go. I love a lot of freedom. I don't like being tied down to just one thing, so I probably pursue several different routes. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. So um, do you think going to college for, for one thing and doing that for the rest of your life, I mean, how do you feel about that? A lot of people that go to college do not actually get into the job they want, or if they do, they end up hating it. So. I have mixed feelings about that. I think learn all you can, see what really interests you, and develop a passion for it. And if you have a passion for it, you're going to continue and want, and you want, you will want to learn more about it and to do it more. So I think that's probably the best way. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I, I kind of have to agree with her <laughs> because what I set out to do and you know, what I went to school for, I, I did for a great many years, but um, I think I mentioned yesterday how was it really something that I want to do for the rest of my life? Um, and although I had, you know, a job that I had to be there every day and people weren't working from home as much as they are now, um, I felt boxed in, almost prison-like, and I don't like that feeling, you know. And now, with the many things that I do, I have a lot more freedom uh, to pursue other things and, um, and you know, and develop multiple streams of income. It doesn't mean that uh, just because I don't go to a particular building to go to work, I do, you know, you can't make a living. And that's what the beauty is of I think homeschooling is it allows the child to um, explore different subjects as deeply as they want um, and spend a few days. So nothing is in a rush unless you make it, you know, into a rush. Yeah. And, you know, Olivia has, you know, she has really dived into some of the interests early on. I mean, she was really heavily into a certain type of crafting when she was like seven, eight years old already. Um, so she'd get her school work done, you know, pretty much in the morning. And then she'd have all afternoon and into the evening to, to devote to the things that um, caused her heart to swell. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And um, she found, you know, that she had different interests and she could develop skills along the way. 
thank goodness to YouTube, you can find um, out how to YouTube do. YouTube was my best friend. <laughs> I would look up tons of crafting videos and just, yeah, I would have a ball with it. Yeah. So when you're doing that, are you educating yourself? Oh, yes, definitely. Some of the uh, tools and things that I learned how to use when I was younger, uh, especially an exacto knife. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I got pretty good at it, and I was able to. I'm, I'm, how old were you when you first started using the exacto knife? I don't, I don't really remember. I remember not a lot of my childhood. <laughs> well, she was, was really about, young, like and 10? most parents would have not Man. allowed their child to use an exacto knife. I think I was about nine. Well, before I used an exacto knife, I used the box cutter. Yes. And I thought that was an exacto knife, but then I discovered it, and I loved it. Yeah, she had um, developed an interest in making things out of cardboard and then foam board, and I used to make a lot of mini food for my American Girl dolls. I yeah, I have a whole tiny fridge full, <laughs> and that's good because. What is the biggest thing that you use in your daily life? And if you, you told me this morning, if you didn't have it, um, it would be terrible. So, so what, do you, what is it that you use daily? Uh-oh. I'm sorry. We didn't rehearse this. No, we didn't. It starts with an I. <laughs> oh, imagination, imagination. If I didn't have my imagination and I wasn't able to create like diff like just a whole bunch of different things that I love and to put passion towards, then I I would basically be dead inside. There would be nothing if I didn't have my imagination. And I have to say that homeschooling does not squash imagination, but encourages it. Mm -hmm. It encourages deep thought imagination and critical thinking really because if she runs into a problem I am NOT going to step in and try to figure it out for her you know because time is of essence or something like that it's better to let your kids really think it through and figure it out and see what they come up with because kids can be so imaginative and they they actually know a lot more than we we, we really think yeah, or give them credit yeah. for. I think Charlotte Mason, um, who was an educator back in the day where kids were working in factories, and she, she fought against that. And she said, no, education needs to be available to all children. And so one of her things is, is uh, that she, maybe it's a quote or something that she wrote about children already have the knowledge deep within them and education is really awakening or, or encouraging them to remember what they already know. And I think that's profound. And I found that so many times with Olivia, working with her, and um, especially when we uh, talk about history. And, you know, hist history can be pretty gory. And, you know, some of the time periods uh, that we studied, and we always read something and looked for a deeper meaning. Like, why would this happen? And how could they have avoided, you know, this catastrophe or this war or, you know, whatever the challenge was? And it allows for some deep thinking. And, and I think that's necessary today. I think so often is that we're just trying to jam information into our kids. And if it comes out on the other end, um, exactly how it went in, uh, you know, then you got high marks and you got good grades, but. We didn't really learn anything. You're just spitting the information back out. And with some of the tests I've had to take over the years, um, after I've taken the test, I remember nothing from what I learned because I just remembered for the test. And then after that's done, I'm like, oh, okay, don't need that information anymore. Got to make way for uh, the next test, basically. Yeah. And, and that's a shame. And so, and so education is so much more than just getting good grades is how you apply it in your life. I mean, does it have any meaning to you? And that's what makes history not boring, mm -hmm. is um, 
you can learn from people's past mistakes and, um, you know, hopefully you don't repeat them. It's better to learn that way than to have to do it yourself, you know, unless you're one of those kind of learners. But um, that's probably my biggest concern is that um, even though, you know, people go through an education system, how are they coming out on the other side all the way through their holistic self, right? Is one slice of the pie in someone's journey of growing up with intellectual education, right? And then there's the spiritual and then physical. I mean, there's so many other slices of the pie that need to be developed. Um, so that's my thought on that. Now, if you have any questions about homeschooling, you know, let me know. We can talk it through. Uh, we've got lots of years and we've made a lot of mistakes <laughs> and we've had a lot of wins and no, not one homeschooling family looks like another. No. And everyone has different learning styles and you really got to find what works for you. And we found that for me, it's freedom. Yeah, absolutely. Not to be um, tied down or held down, mm -hmm. just to have the freedom to learn. To, to explore your imagination, you know, because you have the time to do it. So right now, you're schooling at home. It's not really homeschooling because homeschooling is you're generating the curriculum. It's coming from you. You put in all of the work to choose something that is going to work for your child, right? That's, that's like skin in the game. <laughs> when you do that, it's like blood, sweat, and tears and a lot of sleepless nights, making sure that you purchase the right curriculum, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah and even then, there's no guarantee that it's going to work, All right? So you're gonna have to get used to the idea if you're con contemplating this route of education, that you're gonna spend a lot of money. The good thing is, is that you can resell it. Yeah. <laughs> that is true, we have resold a lot of curriculum. Yeah, because yeah, there's going to be another family out there that doesn't want to spend, you know, full price for a curriculum that they are just testing out. And we've done it, too. So uh, so there's different ways you can homeschool on a dime if you want to, because there's so many free um, programs. Yeah, even online. I don't recommend sticking your kid in front of the computer all day long. OK, no. That is not ah, learning. No. Not 100%. You need to, ex to have some experiences and um, because you have the freedom to do that. And that's what it is all about. And if you were to ask anybody what they really want out of life, what do you think it might be? Fulfillment. And what else? Freedom. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wants freedom. It's what you're going to do with your newfound freedom when you have it. And schooling in America is legal. Each state has their own set of criteria that you need to meet and are either to get approved or to continue um, homeschooling. Uh, a really great resource to do um, some research is on the Homeschool Legal Defense um, Association, which is HSLDA. And if you look that up, Google that, they will tell you everything you need to know on how to homeschool in your particular state. Actually, it's a worldwide organization, so they can provide um, information no matter where you live. And right now, so here, here's an interesting thing. So we have all these kids at home homeschooling. I, I'm just wondering how many continue staying at home once the quarantine period is lifted. And I hope parents can kind of entertain that idea is that you can do just about everything at home. You can work from home. You can run your businesses from home. 
You can educate your children from home. You basically never have to leave your house. You, you don't have to leave. And look what an impact it has had on the environment. Today we read an article where it said that sea turtles are now um, laying eggs on the abandoned beaches. Yeah. A very rare sea turtles too. A very rare sea, sea turtle. They're laying, I think, 70,000 eggs. I don't know if anybody had the time to count all those eggs, but apparently <laughs> there are 70,000 eggs that, that were laid. I mean, wow, right? And dolphins, I heard this morning, are, um, are coming real near to Italy once again, where they weren't, they weren't there. And so um, it, it's kind of like the earth is healing and telling us that, hey, maybe you need to rethink how you're conducting your life and that there may be a better way, right? So what can, so here's a homeschooling question too. What can we learn from all situations that are being presented to us? What can we learn from um, things that are happening around the world? What is the message that we're receiving loud and clear because of COVID-19 and all of the efforts to keep everyone safe? Well, one is worldwide, how things can stop at a screeching halt in a matter of weeks, the whole world shut down. I mean, that's, that's quite, uh, that's I don't even have a word for that. I mean, how does, how does that, you know, that's like a dystopian novel almost, right? Well, and just think of how many novels are gonna come out of this too. Yeah, so I hope you're journaling, having your children journal because this is a historic time. When has the world stopped like this without a uh, bloodshed, right? Without a war. Yeah, there are people that are suffering from this disease and the road back to health is apparently a really long one. So my heart goes out to those individuals and their families that aren't even allowed to come near them while they're in the hospitals recovering. That's got to be a lonely road. And um, gosh, I just hope this thing uh, stops here real soon so that we can, you know, if anything, I, I appreciate the time that I have now more than ever. And um, me too. It's it's a break that we all needed, I think. We were going so fast. The world was going so fast. And so this gives us a time to reevaluate re our lives and to just take a break for a while. And our priorities. Yeah. We assess where our priorities are. And it's making family a, a central priority and to be able to be with each other and to regroup, which is really good. I mean, COVID-19 definitely is not good. It's, it's very dangerous, but some of the things that are coming out of it might, might be pretty good. I think so. This is a huge reset, and I hope you're taking this time to um, reflect on this time and ponder what's going on and what it means to you personally and what you can learn from it. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe approach your life a little bit differently after all this is over. Are you gonna go right back into that crazy schedule you know, that everyone had? All I heard was, I got to do this. Oh, we have to do that. Let's get in the car, we have to, we're gonna be late. Um, I have to make that phone call and you know running around like a bunch of crazies actually but that we were speeding up so quickly and I think it's because we have information at our fingertips and we can move and make decisions rather quickly now and um, in this forced time to step back and go Ooh, can't do that anymore <laughs> <laughs> I guess my event is canceled 
Um, it's actually been kind of nice. It's just staying at home, yeah. not having to have different responsibilities for different events because we were planning it at several different events for the upcoming months and now it's all canceled. It's kind of a nice break. Yeah, and so in that respect, I'm kind of thankful um, for this regrouping. And um, so I have an office and no one is here. And uh, luckily I can just come in and go whenever I please. It's quite lonely though, because it's a huge- It's a huge building. A huge There's building. There's no one here. There's no one here. And at night, it can be kind of scary. Um, because the floors creak and it's such an old building that <clears throat> the lighting isn't all that great right? And I've been here late with a client pre-COVID and um, leaving late at night and walking down this hall is quite scary because I have a very- like a horror movie. It is. And then you hear weird things from the other side of the building and you're like, oh, what's that? And I have a very vivid imagination, do. <laughs> although I don't watch any scary movies, I can vividly imagine terrible things. <laughs> <laughs> so my heart races every time I shut that door and have to walk down the <laughs> hall. <laughs> and I'm practically going, you know, I'm running some kind of race to get down to the stairs and back into my car. Yeah. And I'd never dare looking back up uh, <laughs> to the, the second floor up at my windows because I have visions of somebody looking back down at me. Isn't that crazy? I don't even watch scary movies. But yeah, this building has that effect. And not having anybody in the building while I'm working <laughs> is really weird. But I have the freedom of coming and going. And we may just turn my... Um, office into a filming studio yeah do more facebook lives i'll just we'll just um i can see clients uh online from here on out i don't even need to have clients in my in my office i don't have to see the children here so this is kind of cool is that my business has changed to being a hundred percent online and that's okay with me if it's okay with parents because you can still get a lot done uh, via a Zoom call or whatever platform that we decide to use. Mm -hmm. So we may turn this um, office into a filming studio. I have other plans yeah. going forward. So do you have any last, um, I don't know, comments? comments uh, let's say for kids your age, um, who, who might be contemplating homeschooling, what would you say to them? Um, well, homeschooling isn't for everybody, but it's a wonderful thing to try. It's a new experience, and you should always be expanding your horizons in any way you can. And homeschooling might turn out to be a wonderful thing for you, and you might really enjoy it. And so it doesn't hurt to try. You can always go back and redo anything if you need to, but you should and I think it'll be great and yeah homeschooling is a wonderful thing and it gives you so many opportunities and freedoms to pretty much whatever you want whatever avenue of learning you want to take whatever subject you want to do you can do it and it's really wonderful and you should definitely give it a try well what what do you have to say about um socialization socialization okay I get this question a lot too from my school friends I socialize all the time and we have and at this time we can't really socialize so we're doing it online anyways and I've noticed that it's a lot easier for me to talk to adults and to kids and to anybody really and we get a whole range of ages and I talked about this earlier but you're just exposed to a lot more people and you're you have to make uh, connections with people too and especially owning a business I have to do a lot of networking and so socializing not a hard thing to do you can literally go outside and go talk to your neighbors it's but yeah it's not hard do you feel like you've missed anything um, by homeschooling well yeah I missed 
a lot of things that I didn't really want to be exposed to. I like being, I like being sheltered. I mean, I'm not fully sheltered at all or anything. I see the world for what it is, but it gives me a lot cleaner learning environment. And I'm not saying that school isn't doesn't have a good learning environment, but I really enjoy mine. So yeah, I, no, I haven't really missed anything that I would want to be involved in. So. Um, how do you feel when people say, oh, you're just a weirdo homeschooler? <laughs> Actually, I get that a lot too from certain friends. I am not a weirdo homeschooler. I'm a perfectly normal person. People don't realize I am homeschooled until they, I tell them. But you just got to keep developing yourself in different ways and spiritually, educationally. And just become the best person you can be, and people will not know you're homeschooled. They don't really think about that. And, I mean, you got a lot of weirdo kids in school, too. True. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there is no normal, and there is no weird. We're just, we just are, really. So, can you find, um, uh, well, this is a thing that parents have asked me, is that, well, what if your kid turns into some kind of like introverted person and they never want to leave their room and because they're home all day and that, you know, and I and I always say, well, I think you can find those kind of kids at school, too. Yeah, I know a lot of people like that who do go to school and afterwards they just go to their room and they hide away. They don't they don't really come out and socialize. I've seen a lot of kids do that. So in whatever learning environment, you're going to find all kinds of kids and personalities and preferences. And There's a lot of kids who are homeschooled who are introverted. And then there's a lot of homeschoolers that are very extroverted and very outgoing. So you have it on both sides. And it doesn't really matter what learning environment you're in. But just keep expanding and keep growing, pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. I, I truly believe that. Um, last year, right around this time, I noticed that there was a need for teens to uh, homeschool teens to get together and they kind of age out of co-ops and co-ops are wonderful for um, when, you're younger. when you're younger, right? And there's a lot of co-ops in the area. We are really blessed having a lot of homeschoolers in our area yeah. so there's a lot of co-ops and actually I started one in 2014 or 15 no 2015 I started a co-op and I ran it for four years and it was a great experience but Olivia was growing out of it and I knew that I had to either catapult the same co-op into an older but um I couldn't figure out how to do it but so I found and I talked to the, to the parents of the co-op and I said look I'm gonna move on with Olivia if you want to take this thing over you have my blessing just keep it the way that um, that I set it up and I did that way for a reason and I wanted to continue having the name operate in that way so they did they took it over and I started 18 um, homeschool group and we have 13 teens and um, it's pretty fun actually we're doing things that are very difficult to do at home mm -hmm. like having um, deeper discussions about books and having um, we have Socratic seminars on the material we're reading and we get put into um, like we had a country building activity that lasted several weeks where we had to come up with government, how our people were going to live. And it actually split up into two different countries. And it was a really great experience. And we treated it like it was it was a real thing. And it was really it was a really great activity. So when I introduced this idea that um, they were supposed to come up with their own country and develop their own laws and um, you know, basically start from scratch and they could choose whether it was because of a, a you know, a catastrophic um, situation which wiped everybody out. So they had total freedom to determine uh, the cause 
that they're running a new country and then um, choose an actual land mass, you know, on the earth where they were going to have their country. And it started out as one as a one group project. And the idea was that I was just going to let them do this for a couple of hours and then they would be done and <laughs> we could move on. It a two month situation. It did. <laughs> we were really devoted to it. They were so passionate about their idea about how to run a country. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Which took me aback. So, um, so what I see is that kids, given an opportunity to explore their imagination, um, can really develop some great skills that they can use later on in their life. And I watch these kids grow. Um, some of them are very introverted, and some of them still claim that they're introverted. <laughs> they're not introverted anymore. Not anymore. They have come out of their shell. They have, and they all have something to say and contribute to the group. Oh, it's just very valuable. Mm -hmm. So during this COVID-19, uh, instead of meeting in person, we are online now. And, and it does take away um, some certain, of the magic. Yeah. Yeah. I, we love meeting in person. Sadly, we cannot do that now. But we still we still have good debates. And Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It gets quite heated sometimes. And they're having one next Tuesday that they scheduled on their own outside. <laughs> <laughs> of um, you know the meeting dates that I had scheduled so I love it that they're taking initiative and doing some really hard things and they're having a conversation I guess next week on their own a debate I'm not going to be a part with of this it by yourselves. I think it's a good opportunity for them yeah. to to manage their own debate Speaking of which, I gotta set up that Zoom meeting. <laughs> you do. <laughs> Anyways, there are so many wonderful things that can come out of making the decision to take control of the education for your children. And oh, okay, so maybe that's not the right way to say. You will actually never have full control because as you're learning and growing together, there's going to be new opportunities presenting itself all the time. So you kind of have to let it go mm -hmm. holistically, naturally, organically to have the full effect. And let your kids take control too of what they want to learn. If they are involved and invested in it, they're more likely to be able to learn better and want to learn. Absolutely. And that's why it's important to get your kids, um, uh, you know, value all of your kids' ideas, no matter how crazy they are. And um, ask their opinions, too, on different subjects, even on very serious topics. Ask their opinions. Mom has always done that for me, and I've been able to form opinions of my own ever since I was very little. Yeah, I think that's probably one of the, the best things that we ever did is to ask a lot of questions. I wasn't concerned about answers. I was concerned more about, are you asking the right questions? We can always find answers later on. But um, asking for what they think is really important. I have to say, there's a lot of kids, when you ask them their opinion, they're like, I don't know. You know, I have no idea. But when you start it really early on, asking them their feed for for their feedback and their opinions and what they would do in similar situations, boy, that starts the brain really working. And um, so we never actually had like a critical thinking thing. We just made that a part of our day that you know. We are going to think things through. We discuss very serious topics, religion, and different types of wars, and throughout history, too. And we, yeah. Yeah. We got deep. We did. We did. 
And I remember a lot of those conversations when she is like, you know, eight or nine even. And um, so here's another thing. When you're homeschooled, you have, uh, you know, you're not stuck on the Disney Channel. I, I noticed that a lot of homeschooling families don't do what everyone else looks at or watches. <laughs> so Olivia uh, discovered shows. TV shows. One of my favorite shows is Dick Van Dyke and I Love Lucy or the Lucio Ball Show. Yeah. I love those shows. I still do. And they're really wonderful. <laughs> They are. And so she, she, this is on her own. I never said, hey, we're going to watch Dick Van Dyke series, you know. I loved old shows. I, I was quite an old soul when I was younger. I've become more trendy, sort of. Not really. But. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so my friends, sometimes they could pop over and, and uh, Olivia would be watching an old show. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, wow, that's an old show. What are you watching that for? Or, you know, and I'm like, no, it's not. I'm not watching this. <laughs> Olivia's watching it. Oh. <laughs> but she developed her sense of humor. And, of course, Dick Van Dyke is all clean sense of humor. Yeah. So, And she uh, developed a love for British humor as well. So... All in all, the world is your oyster when you're homeschooling. Mm -hmm. you, you don't have to worry about what your friends are doing or not doing or what they like. There's no peer pressure. You are free to be really who you are and, and explore your very own interests without the confines of um, making sure that you fit. You don't have to in. mold. Uh, society doesn't have to mold you into what it wants to be. You can mold yourself into what you want to be. Yeah. And parents become lifelong learners. I am still learning. Okay. I, I just um, was kind of reintroduced to Ralph Waldo Emerson's work. And although I've heard of him and, you know, I may have read some things about him before, but um, so now later in my life, I've run into, I'm going to re recommend everyone to read this. It's a hard read. And I, and I do recommend that all kids read some hard stuff. You know, it's all English. It's just put together differently. And it uses a lot of brain cells, you know, rub those brain cells together every once in a while, you'll be surprised, and read something difficult, and um, his work is difficult to read, but you have to take like one sentence at a time and figure out what he's trying to convey. Yes, and he has a lot of good stuff to say, though. I really like him a lot. He does, and he wrote an essay called uh, self-reliance I believe that's what it is and um, wow and this was mid 1800s and it was like he saw the future by writing this and um, it was the reason why I read it is because it's kind of appropriate right now because he recommended at that time to stop with all the distractions go home and figure yourself out Get to know yourself before, you know, going out into the world. Understand who you are. I don't know what kind of reaction people had towards his work back then, but it's, it's an eye-opener. So, yeah, so we're living in an age where information can be, um, you know, reached really quickly. And don't stay with just today's information. Like, you know, a lot of kids do. It's just whatever is on their phone, right? What's happening now. And getting information that's, you know, being published today. Go back. Go back, because that's where the fruit is. Mm -hmm. And look back at a time where it was completely different, but it was on the earth just maybe a few hundred years ago, how they thought of things. It's good to get a perspective of how we our change our thinking has changed throughout history, and 
to really see how our perspectives have changed and where our priorities are. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for watching. And like I said, reach out. I'm, you know, you I mean, can, we're in quarantine. We got nothing better to do. <laughs> what do you got to do? <laughs> you can just reach out. Yeah. Ask us anything. Um, like I said, I, I have several things that I do. And, and one of the things I do, I'm a life coach for kids and teens and adults. Mm -hmm. And I use a curriculum called Adventures in Wisdom. It's a wonderful curriculum. Thank you. Uh, she gets to listen in sometimes to, yeah. to um, some of my uh, sessions. And um, yeah, the stories are rich, really rich. And kids um, understand principles better when it's tied to a story. Definitely. And um, it's story-based, of course, and then lots of discussion afterwards and perhaps an activity. I could do that so much more easier when it was like in person. <laughs> but now that we're not in person any longer, um, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. So next Tuesday, I've got classes starting online, 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. These classes can be taken from anywhere in the world. Um, you can just go to my website, www.wisdomtree.com, online booking on the tab, and go to workshop and find it there. Or you can just look on, on my Facebook page and grab the link directly there. I hope to see your children. I've got lots of things to share and um, good stories and good lessons. And the first one is overcoming fear. And I've, I've gotten so good at that overcoming fear that um, after trying this Facebook Live now, this is the fifth day, I'm over any fear. <laughs> I got, I have none. I have no fear. So watch out. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is my first Facebook Live. Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, what do you think about it? I think it's great. It's wonderful. Well, it's nice when you're when you have somebody else to um, share energy with, but I'm telling you, it's hard to do it when you're just talking to a camera and yeah. there's no other energy in the room except for your own. It's hard to draw from, but I did it, so I can say that I can do hard things. <laughs> well, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have yes, a wonderful Easter you. Sunday. Stay Tomorrow, safe and stay healthy. Yeah. And I, we could have another episode on what we do to stay healthy. Oh, we got a lot to talk about there, too. <laughs> we could share some things. And it works. And um, I think everybody should know about it. Everyone's yeah. going to have different opinions about what we do. But here we are. We're healthy. <laughs> <laughs> that should say something, right? <laughs> so, okay. Right. Thank have you so much for joining us today. It was a lot of fun. It was. It was. At least it was for us. I don't know about you. <laughs> but it was for us. So we appreciate you staying on with us and chatting with us. And don't hesitate to reach out. Yeah. I'm here to help. We have a lot of resources and a lot of unconventional ideas. We do. Why? Why? Why do we have unconventional ideas? Because we have the freedom to have them. There you go. <laughs> we have the freedom have unconventional ideas yep and we're not afraid to use them so watch out <laughs> all right we're going Thank see you. you later bye <laughs>